I probably ought to start off by saying that just because I've shown a list of ways of being able to extrude items inside of Sony Vegas and customize them, and also external modeling programs to be able to create different bits and pieces that can be exported as image sequences and brought into Sony Vegas, doesn't mean that my list is exhaustive. It's not exhaustive. There are other plugins that can do it natively inside Sony Vegas. And of course, there are other modeling software options out there. I just had to be showing the ones that I've got available to me. Some of them work inside Sony Vegas. Some of them integrate with Sony Vegas. Some of them are external. So obviously, there are other options. And feel free to search on the internet and find out what you can. However, I'm starting, the first one is inside of Sony Vegas using Boris Continuum units. Now, a word about Boris Continuum units. You can see that this particular option is 299 just to give me the 3D options. And you're going to see in a moment how incredibly powerful they are. However, please notice that at 299 I get one unit, whereas if you go to products and you were to go to Continuum Complete Sony Vegas, so go to Sony, and we look at it here, you can see that the complete set of units is 595. And if I actually go to products, you'll see here are the Continuum units, 299 just for that particular one there. And also I think we were looking at the... Um, image restoration unit the other day and that was also I think something like yeah 299 so if you were to just get those two units that's already more than buying the whole package so if you're going to have more than one of these particular items then I would definitely say it's worth getting the whole set it's still a lot of money I understand that but for particular projects it might save you so much and give you so many other options for how you can do things that it might be a much much better solution to say yep I'm going to use those and bring in effects that you just don't have in Sony Vegas for instance the time effects which I doubt I'll have time to cover in this series but can give you amazing time based effects that you wouldn't otherwise have and also the particles and the art looks amazing and the, the keying for chroma keying and what have you you can do chroma keying inside of Sony Vegas but some of these plugins do seem to work sometimes a little bit better so just bear in mind that buying the individual units could be a false economy if you think you're going to use more of them because you spend 299 for one as opposed to 500 and something for the other. Okay, so using this particular plugin, I'm going to use the 3D objects. So I've got the, the BCC 3D objects here and all I'm going to show you is extruded text because there isn't time to show the other options. But once you get an idea of how this works, you'll find it a lot easier to be able to work with the other ones, say things like the type on text and what have you. So to be able to apply this, you need to have something to put it onto. And for that, we go to the media generators and we can use any solid color, really. It doesn't matter. Um, what's going to happen is the BCC plugin is going to completely take over what you put on the timeline. So if I take a green event, drop it on the timeline, doesn't matter what color it is. As soon as I add BCC 3D extruded text, or there it is, extruded text, drop it onto there, the green will disappear and I get the window saying, OK, what are you going to do with this? Now, for a simple tutorial, there is not enough time to be able to go through all that can be done inside this very powerful plugin. So the first thing you must do is launch the text window, and then you can type in your text. So I'm going to put T-E-X-T, -E being highly imaginative, as you can see that I am. I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to say I want that center justified. OK, so it's going to be center justified. I can format the text down here. So you've got tracking and kerning and leading, bits and pieces that we've looked at in previous tutorials. So I'm not going to go through all of those. Can make it bold if you want to, or you can make it italics if you want to. You can even play with skew in X and Y. I'm not actually going to do those, but you can skew the text, sort of like an extreme italicization, really. So that's at zero. I'll just quickly show you. You can see that you can really twist it around however you want. But I'm going to leave it at zero at the moment. This color bar, ignore it. You don't colorize your text here. That's done inside the plugin later on. Anyway, click apply. There's the text. You can see it's 3D. Now, the first thing to notice is that there are lights associated with this text. Okay, I could go for a preset. I'm not going to, but I could choose one of the presets and it's going to create all kinds of weird and wacky. You can save something you create, okay, and you can load it. So if you create something you like, save it and you can load it again for later on. So do bear that in mind, but I'm not going to use presets. But different lights allow you to reflect on the unit in different ways. So there's three different lights. I'm going to turn them off and on. You can change the way a light works and change the look of a text simply by playing with the light. So here is the built-in light, one. Open it up, and I'm going to scroll down to it, and I'm going to change its color. So if I change its color, say, to blue, you can instantly see that I've colorized the text 
because the light shining onto it is blue. It's got nothing to do with the material on the front of the text. It happens to be a reflective material and it's reflecting the blue light and I've got a different look to it. Now if I was to happen to go to light 2, and I haven't turned on light 2, but let's just add light 2 and let's make it red. Well, I've got to turn it on first, so let's just click to turn on light 2. Now I'm going to go down to light 2, shut light 1 down, light 2, let's make this slightly redder. Okay, you can see that I've got blue coming from one direction, red coming from the other direction. But look what happens when I play with the source Z, which is where it is either coming towards me or away from me. So at the moment, the red light and the blue light are going from the front towards the unit. But if I take the red light and start to move it backwards, can you see it shining on the edge of the text? And you can see that this text really does have true extrusion. So you can create some amazing looks just playing with lights. I'm not going to spend more time on it, but just bear in mind that you can do all of that very quickly. When it comes to rendering, you've got an option to increase the polygon count and to play with aliasing and all these different bits and pieces. This is really to do with if you've got extreme animation and it looks a bit jagged at times. This is a true 3D model which is made up of polygons. If you want to increase the quality of it, you increase the polygon count. End result is slower rendering. But you can play with that and you can play with the aliasing and the smoothness and what have you. So we're not going to go through all of those, but just know that you have options to increase the quality if you need to, but it will slow down the rendering. Materials are what we apply to this actual item. So at the moment it's just coming as default grey, but we can actually add a material. At the moment we're saying it's going to be the same on all sides. And I'm going to add one of their default materials to the front. So if I go to preset, notice you can load your own. So if you have a texture on your computer, you can load your own textures. You can even save out your own textures. Let's just uh, load one in. Let's go for stone rough. Okay, so that's rough stone. Let's try another one. Let's go down to wood varnished. Now notice that the wood varnish is showing less of the blue light because it's a less of a reflective surface than the previous one. So I'm going to go to, if you go to color heat, you can see you can actually get totally different looks just by playing with it and you can play with those texture colors so you can change how it actually looks. So there's an awful lot you can do with materials. You can also change the ambient intensity of the light. So at the moment it's quite well lit in my opinion but if I turn it up I can make the whole thing brighter. Now you might end up going beyond broadcast legal if you go too high on this so just be a little bit careful but you can change the intensity of the light of the scene that you're creating. And you can put materials, different materials on the side, on the back, to the bevel, and all those different bits and pieces. Now, there's not time to go through all of these different bits and pieces, but I'm going to show you a couple more just for interest. Transformation. Transformation is simply where the item is in X, Y, and Z. Now, X is side to side, Y is up and down, and Z is in and out. So if I was to go to position, you can see I've got X and Y position, but I've also got Z position, which is a slider on its own, which allows me to push it towards me or away from me. Okay, now it looks different as it moves through those lights, okay, because those lights aren't animating, they're staying where they are. So just bear in mind that you're seeing a different look just simply because of the positioning of the lights. Double click. If you want to rotate it, you need to think about which axis you want to rotate around. Remember Y goes up and down. So therefore, if I rotate it around Y, it's going to sort of spin in a way that I think is quite pleasing. So if we look at rotate Y, I can spin the item, and you can see that this really is true 3D text, true extrusion. And if you want to, of course, you can increase the width of the extrusion. Okay, you can have it a lot, lot wider. I think that's, uh, let's just go up a bit here. I think it's going to be under extrusion. You have the option to extrude it. I'm not going to say that I particularly want to increase it. I don't think long extrusions look that good, to be honest. I think smaller extrusions look better. But what you also have is the option to change this bevel. So you see this reflective area here. This is the bevel of the actual text. At the moment, it's straight, but you do have two other options. Convex, which is a much thinner and uh, actually quite a pleasing look, and also concave which is sort of indented, and I, I quite like convex. I like uh, my text to look fairly simple and straight, and I think that's a really nice look, and you can see the highlights on that bevel are, are looking really nice. Okay, so we can play with the transformations, and we can play with all the other bits and pieces. 
I'm just going to show you a few more. There's not time to go through everything else, but we've got path. Okay, at the moment there's no path, but if we go to a line, okay, we can look at point one and point two of this line, we can actually decide how this particular item is going to move. Now, if I move it around, you can see there's the point. How do I want the text to move? Do I want to change its direction simply by playing with these points? You can see you can actually grab them on screen as well. So we can grab on screen as to where these points are going to go to. And then you can change its position on that path so you can make it slide in and slide off just by playing with the path. Okay, angle on path. You can actually decide how you want the text to look on the path. But as you can see, the, the, the top of the T, if I go too far, is actually eating into the E and the E's eating into the X. So just be a little bit careful if you do play with this angle on path. That's basically saying straight to the path. This is saying effectively perpendicular to the path or per yeah, just staying straight as it goes along the path. And you can align it and you can reverse the path. And there's plenty of options you can play with on path. You can even do jitter, which is the way it moves around. But uh, I'm not going to play with all of those bits and pieces. I'm going to, in fact, shut path down. Just demonstrating you've got these options and showing you how powerful this little plugin is. Um, let's just have a quick look at a couple of others. The curl deformer. To enable these ones down the bottom here, notice you need to actually click the checkbox to say I'm using it. Turn it on, then you can open up curl deformer and it's ready to go. So direction guess, you can say X to Y, whatever it's going to be. So we're going to left to right plus Y. And then when I start to change angle one, I can move it up and down that way. Okay, maybe let's just look at it. Let's do it to Z. Okay, top to bottom, back to front. Let's try back to front Z. We can really create some bizarre looks, okay? Uh, I think that's perhaps not what I'm looking for. That was X anyway, so I meant Z. Top to bottom Z, let's try that one. Angle one, there we go, twisting it. So we can twist the text backwards and forwards. And of course, these are animatable. You can't animate the extrusion. That's probably one of the things that you can't animate, but pretty much everything else inside of this is fully animatable. And you can just create some amazing little bits and pieces, just having them twisting and turning and small movements, subtle movements. You can have a play with these to your heart's content. So I'm just showing you that you can do this with a curl deformer. I'm actually going to turn off the curl deformer. I don't want to use that, but I just wanted to show you it. The one that people love to play with and actually isn't used that much, but is, is quite powerful, is the shatter deformer. So when you get the shatter deformer, if you turn on shatter, again, you need to turn it on, enable it, scroll down to see the parameters. But right at the beginning, and I'm at the beginning of my event, yes, I am at the beginning of my event. If I hit my play button, you'll see that it does shatter by default. So it shatters already turned on. And there it goes. It shatters away. Okay, so you can play with how it shatters. There's lots of different options for the way that the crack points work. You can have them random crack points and what have you. How crackable something is. So if you take this down to virtually zero, I'll say, let's take it down to just about one or two so that's two if I now play on that one you'll see that it won't break up very much but if I take it down to zero crackability in other words you are not allowed to crack but I hit play you'll see that the bevel's going to crack but the main text stays the same okay so you can have these things crackable you can have them going to a hundred percent and they'll go bananas velocity where is it going to go out from also how fast is it going to shoot out so you can make it a very, very subdued crack. It just cracks and breaks. Or you can have it just zooming out the screen and basically exploding because you see you've got explosion force. And also gravity. Is it going to just hover in place or is it going to fall down really fast? So you can't go negative. You can't make it go up, but you can take it down to cracking in place. So I'll just play that one. So if I crack it in place, basically explodes where it is and that stays on screen a lot longer. Whereas if I take gravity to quite a high level and I click play, you'll see that it kind of shoots down and falls down really quickly. So just playing with the physics of this particular item can make a massive difference. I'm not going to go through all the different bits and pieces, but you need to play with these and see how powerful this little option is. And the only other one that I'm going to show for this tutorial before we run out of time is the pulse deformer. So I'm going to turn off shatter, turn on pulse and open up pulse. And I'm just going to go with the default, which is bulge breathing. Okay, what does that mean? Well, if I just click play, watch what happens.
Okay, now that just bulged the text. Now, did you notice that you could see sort of squares and it wasn't looking really good? This is an instance where you might increase the polygon count. Now, obviously, that is pretty high amplitude. So if I turn the amplitude down quite a bit, I turn the frequency, let's turn the frequency up just for fun and click play. Should breathe quite a lot quicker. Okay, now pulse deformers allow you to do all kinds of bits and pieces. You can play the phrase, the frequency. You don't just have to be bulge. You can have a twist, a bend, you can make it deform, bounce, whatever you want to do. All of these different things can be done and they can be done with an amplitude and a frequency. Amplitude is how much, frequency is how often. So as you can see, you can create and animate some amazing 3D text with the BCC extruded text option. The other one that I, I don't have time to show you, which I use quite a lot, is type on text. And type on text allows you to type on and do many of the same sort of animations with your text so it can come on one letter at a time to type on screen and fly on screen or do all sorts of other bits and pieces. Really powerful and really fun. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Sorry it's been so long. My name's Andrew Davis and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.